All right, folks, welcome to a quick tutorial on doing occlusion in a way that doesn't suck. Uh, this level is set up such that you can see that there are basically two main areas. Uh, there's the room that you enter, which is filled with ridiculous amount of spheres. You can assume that's the majority of your level detail. There is a room uh, through this hallway here, which is also filled with a ridiculous number of spheres. Uh, which again, you can assume is the detail in the room. And uh, by default, uh, regardless of what room you're in and what walls you're looking at, you're going to be rendering all of this. So if you're over here and you're looking at this wall, you're actually rendering this wall and this hallway and this room and all of these really heavy detail spheres, which you don't want because that makes your level kind of suck frame rate wise. So. Let's look at a video of what that looks like. All right, so here's a sample of a non-occluded level. You can see room one there with all of its spheres, room two with all of its spheres, and all of this is being rendered all the time. Uh, that little blue avatar guy is our avatar, and everything within that yellow uh, cone there is being rendered uh, despite what he's seeing. So on the left, he's just seeing a pink wall, but he's actually rendering everything beyond that pink wall, including the spheres. Uh, so as he comes around, he's seeing all these spheres, and now he's seeing the pink hallway, the red room, and all the spheres on the other side, even though there's actually no need to. So here's an occluded level. Uh, you can see now the second room, the green room, is not visible at all. And why would it be? He can't see it. So there's no reason to render something that your avatar can't see. Um, so again, watching as he walks through this hallway, he's going to walk forward. Still can't see the green room, no reason to render it. Can't see the red room. Now here in the middle, he actually can't see either room. So there's, again, no reason to render it uh, that we have started the green room up because he can sort of see it. And now coming around the corner, uh, he sees the green room again, but doesn't see the red room. So we're not rendering something the level and uh, dropping frames uh, because the player can't see it. We're going to walk back through, go through the triggers again, and around the corner, coming around, and now he sees the red room again. Now, after looking at that video with the occlusion, you may be asking yourself, how the F did he do that? Well, it's pretty simple. Uh, we're going to use something called VRC triggers, uh, which are one of the scripting elements that are available in the uh, VRChat SDK. So let's take a look at one uh, right here. This is a trigger that I've set up. Uh, so let's look at the properties here. You can see, depending on the resolution of this, uh, you probably can't read it, so I'll describe it. Uh, this is an on enter trigger that is set to be local only. In order to get that local to show up, you actually have to check this advanced mode checkbox. Um, so I have set the layers for this trigger to player local. That basically means that a uh, local player will trigger this uh, when entering it. And upon entering this trigger, uh, you set active uh, what I've labeled occlude underscore room 2. You set that to true. Uh, that's basically making that element active in the world. And you simultaneously set occlude room 0, 01 to false, uh, which makes that element inactive in the world. So if we go to the hierarchy over here and uh, shut all this stuff down, uh, this is occlude room 1. You can see that it includes basically all that. This is occlude room 2, and you can see it includes all that. Uh, and this is the occluded hallway, uh, which we unoccluded, which we are never actually going to occlude, and then I've got some logic in here. So uh, what we're basically doing is using this trigger here. Uh, when you touch it, it will make this room active and make this room inactive, but it is only doing it locally. It's only doing it for the player that touched the trigger in their local version of the instance, which means if I'm standing here and you hit this trigger, you shut this room off for yourself. You do not shut it off for me uh, because as hilarious as that would be to leave me plummeting to my death, uh, you probably don't want to do that to other players. So how do we set these triggers up? Let's assume that we do not have one and uh, we're going to create it new. So I'm going to take this step by step. So Bam, there's no trigger there. What do we do? Uh, first thing we're going to do is basically create a cube 3D object. There it is. It's great. It's a great cube. Uh, we're going to change 
the size of it to something approximating a trigger. Let's see, let's bring that up a little more. Okay, so this is what the player is going to encounter. Uh, I like to put a transparent material on the trigger uh, just so I can see it. You would probably make this invisible regardless. So, right now this is a box collider. You're going to want to make it a trigger. To do that, you click is trigger. It is now a trigger, which means you will still collide with it. However, it will not stop you from walking forward. It will simply say, uh, I'm a trigger, I should trigger something. So, click on our trigger, hit add component. And in the search here, we're going to type in VRC trigger, which is going to give us a brand new trigger without any options set. So since this is an occlusion trigger, we're going to trigger advanced mode because uh, we're going to need that in a second. Go to the custom drop down here and choose on enter trigger. And on enter basically has the trigger do something when somebody enters it. Click add. We now have a list of drop downs. We're going to choose local here for a local trigger. This local will not be available unless you've ticked advanced mode up here. Uh, and then we're going to look at trigger individuals, we're going to leave that blank, and we're going to look at layers. And these are the layers of objects in your scene that will collide with this trigger. Because this is intended only for players who are local, uh, we're going to use player local here, which means only player local will collide with it, as opposed to other players. Uh, we're now going to add two actions to this trigger. Under actions, where it says list is empty, you're going to click this little plus sign. You're going to go through basic events, and you're going to select set game object active. Uh, once that trigger is active, uh, we now have a list of receivers. These are basically things that you're going to set active or inactive. We're going to hit the plus sign again. We're going to click the little eyeball here. And uh, you can't see this window, so bring it over. Uh, so we're going to select scene and type occlude. And hey, look at that. It's occlude room 2, which is one of the rooms we want to use. So we're going to select that. And when we hit this trigger, we want to set occlude room true to active. So now upon setting this trigger, occlude room 2 will be set active true. However, we still got this room back here, which we want to turn off. So we're going to do this again. We're going to go down uh, and we're going to add a second trigger. Basic events, set game object active. Go over here, hit plus again, hit the eyeball, go to our scene, type in a clue, and then this time we're going to select room one. The difference here is we're going to set this operation to false. So now when I, the player, enter this trigger, uh, I'm going to set game object occlude room 2, which is this, to true, and I'm going to set game object occlude room 1, which is this, to false. And with that set up, uh, that will now allow you to basically do what you were seeing in the occlusion video, where uh, when I hit this trigger, this turns off and this turns on. Uh, and vice versa. Uh, the only other element that I've added to this is this third trigger here, uh, and the reason this is here is basically to handle spawning. Um, if you use the respawn option in VR chat, you will uh, reappear at the spawner, uh, which you can see in the unincluded logic here uh, I have added to this point. So theoretically, you could walk through here, turn this room off for yourself, and then over here, click respawn and spawn over here where the room doesn't exist for you. Uh, in order to account for that, uh, this trigger is actually set up the same as all the other triggers. It's a is trigger, it's on enter and local again. And all it does is basically set game object to clue room one to true. So when you enter this trigger for whatever reason, uh, generally because you're respawning is the only reason you're gonna enter this, it will turn this room back on uh, to ensure that you do not fall to your death, or in this case, respawn. So that's a quick, easy way to uh, set up occlusion in rooms so that you're not rendering stuff that you're not looking at, which is going to dramatically include uh, improve your performance. Uh, this is even simpler than this is with the two triggers. You could actually just have a flat wall here and just a button that you click on to teleport, which would be like a door. And then in that case, you would have the trigger teleport you and turn this room off. Um, but this, I, I did it this way because this is a bit more difficult to do, but once you set it up, it's a little smoother because as far as the player knows, uh, this is, this stuff is always there, uh, but they can't see it because of the walls. And so you're not rendering stuff they don't see. So as one final step that I want to make sure I bring up before closing, uh, you'll notice each of these triggers is visible, uh, in game to users. I did that so that we could see what's going on, but in your final map, uh, you are not going to want to have your enter triggers visible. So there's a really easy way to uh, hide them. Uh, you would click on the trigger and here over in the inspector, 
uh, you have something called a mesh render that basically uh, allows the object to be rendered uh, in the scene. So you just basically turn that off. Click. So uh, the trigger is still there. Uh, you just can't see it uh, in game any longer. You can still select it from the hierarchy. So this again is another trigger. I don't want it to be visible. Click it. So it's there. It's collidable. Uh, anyone can run into it. Uh, however, it's just not visible to users, which is undesirable.